Hello everyone, welcome to Testing Hot New Makeup for March 2024. Today I'm going to show you how I achieved this look using a full face of some of the hottest new makeup releases. This is the video I look forward to doing every month because I gather up some of the most hyped up, most talked about new makeup releases and try them for the very first time right here on camera. I have so many exciting things to test out today and believe it or not, they all fit into this one little bag. Yes, it is mind blowing how much product and money can fit into one little bag. Now in the past, at the beginning of this video, I've gone through and showed you the majority of the products I am going to be testing out throughout the video. But recently I've started cutting that part out and just going right into testing the products. I will show you just a couple of things that I will be testing out because they are so popular right now and I want you to know that I have them for you in this video. The new Makeup by Mario Master Mattes Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. I also purchased one of the new LYS Beauty Blushes and I'm super, super excited to test out this Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Water Power Serum. So those are just some of the products I will be testing today and without any further ado, let's get started. So this says that it is a mattifying and priming face serum. And for those of you who might be new to my channel, perhaps this is the first video of mine that you're watching, I do have oily skin. So I am super excited about this product. I have had really, really good luck with Danessa Myrick's products in the past. And this water powder serum intrigued me so much. I had to get it. And I've decided that if I'm going to be trying a new primer, it's probably best that I don't also try it with a new foundation. And my reasoning for that is I feel that if I'm trying to test out how a primer works, I should test it out with a foundation I already know works to see if it helps to improve even further the foundation that I already know I like. For example, I'm going to be testing this out underneath my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I love this foundation, however, it does tend to make me a little bit oily throughout the day. So I want to see if this serum powder will help keep the shine at bay. So it says here that this is a multi-action water to powder mattifying priming serum that controls shine, refines and soothes with our comfort matte complex. It says to press bottom to dose quarter size amount. Start on T-zone, use fingers to tap. Then pat and blend all over face. Now we are not going to comment on the state of my glasses. I am waiting or have been waiting for about a week and a half for my new glasses to arrive. I mean, I showed the lady who was helping me pick out new glasses, the current state of my glasses. And she said she would put a rush order on them, but apparently that didn't happen. Okay, I may have had it on too much. So starting with the T-zone, pat, pat, pat doesn't smell like anything, so that's good. I do get oily everywhere, not just my T-zone, so I am patting this everywhere. And besides, I think I pressed out too much anyway, so let's not let it go to waste. It feels a little sticky, but not uncomfortably so. So I am going to quickly apply the Luminous Silk, and then I've got a new concealer to try. Actually, it says that it is a brightening, under eye color corrector. It's from Cali Ray. It's called Hide Away. And I purchased the shade Cool Sunrise. And we shall see if this is enough, meaning will I have to apply another product over it, like a true concealer, or will the brightener be enough? So let's quickly put on the Luminous Silk. This is in the shade 4.5. And I'm using a BK Beauty 101 brush. I do really like the packaging of this concealer. It's very weighty. It's very luxe feeling. I'll be honest with you, if you turn it this way so you can't see the logo, this could be a Gucci product. Ooh, I also like that it has like a little gripper at the top. A lot of brands don't realize that as people get older, a lot of times they have difficulty opening certain packaging. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome. So that does make it difficult for me to open some product. So I, for one, am thankful for packaging that makes it a bit easier, that I don't have to struggle to open. So here's what the applicator looks like. It's kind of small, but I don't mind that. And it's very, very thin, which for a brightener is fine. 
It's very, very spreadable. And wow, it just really took away all that darkness immediately. I'm just blending out the excess over my lid. Yeah, I don't think I'll need to add a concealer. Maybe just some powder, some brightening powder will do the trick. Yeah, I really like the consistency of this a lot. Okay, well that was easy and effective. This next product is new, but I have tried it already. I bought it maybe three weeks ago when it first launched and I took it with me on my trip to Mexico because it's very humid there and I do have oily skin and this claims to be shine controlling, smoothing and shine controlling. It is called HD Skin Setting Powder and I purchased shade 2.1 Medium Neutral. It does come with a puff, but that puff gets pretty messy. I'm actually going to use a cleaner triangle puff. Go into the powder and just press that right through here because I do get extremely oily in this area. I'm also going to press a little bit on my lids and look at how smooth and blurred my skin looks. I never ever use filters on my videos. The light does have a tendency to blow out some imperfections, but no, I would never ever use a filter on a YouTube video. Okay, look at my face. I know my dry skin viewers are probably cringing at this right now, but my oily skinned friends will completely understand. All right, I'm looking pretty pale. It's time to bronze up. And for that, even though it's in a Sephora bag, it's not from Sephora, it is from NYX and I purchased it at Target. It is the Butter Melt Bronzer and I bought the shade Butter Biscuit. Love the packaging, it's so cute. So let's see. Ooh, it smells good. It smells like suntan lotion. Oh, wow. Okay, pigmented, definitely pigmented. Smooth as well. Ooh, I'm gonna be a bronze goddess. Uh-oh, I might have to uh, put some tan around my body. Oh my goodness, all right. This is super pigmented. What I was about to say before I shocked myself was that this very much smells like a Physician's Formula butter bronzer with that sort of suntan lotion-y smell. Okay, I'm going back in but I'm going very, very lightly. This is great though. It blends so nicely. I do think there is a shade lighter than this, but it was sold out when I placed my order. But I think this will work when I have more of a tan. Obviously I'm going to try to make it work now, but I think it'll work better when I have more of a tan. And then maybe I should get the other one for when I'm this color but I do feel very bronze goddessy at the moment. It definitely gave me some color. All right, we've got to fix these clips. I'm getting my hair colored next week and I cannot wait. These grays are out of control. Okay, I've gone ahead and done my brows off camera using the Patrick Ta Brow Pencil and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. And now it's time for the Makeup by Mario palette. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to try this. I love the original Master Mattes palette. I take it with me on every trip I go on. I cannot be without it. When I first got it, I thought, do I really need all of these neutral browns? I was very skeptical, but in the couple of years that it's been around, I have realized I can't be without it. So this one has more neutral tones, neutral to cool tones. And I'm going to start with the ivory shade right underneath my brow. Ooh, I like that. It's nice and bright. It's a little bit lighter than the one in the original Master Mattes. It's a little bit more of a bright white. So that's under the brow and then a little bit in here to lighten up this area. And now I'm using a BK Beauty 211 and I'm going into maybe this one right here. 
I'm just running that back and forth through my crease. Okay, that's a good shade. That is a good shade for a transition. And because I have hooded eyes, I am applying this with my eyes open, looking directly into the mirror, and then pushing in where my crease would be, and then blending a little bit higher. Just kind of pushing in with my brush, and blending, and then extending out towards my temples. Extending it a little bit more over here. I'm also going to take this shade and run it along my lower lash lines. Actually, I'm gonna go into the one that's right below it, a little bit darker as well and just sort of smudge that along my lower lash line. Very soft and pretty. Now I'm going back in with a shade right next to the lightest shade and kind of buffing right in between so there's no harsh line in between the two. As far as the pigmentation and blendability of the shadows, they're excellent. Now I'm taking a little crease brush. This is a BK Beauty A502. And I'm gonna go into this gray, this taupey gray in the corner. And I'm just going to pat that on the outer corners of my eye. I'm raising my brow so I can see under the hood. And I'm just patting that out. Lately I have been doing my eyeshadow a little bit more rounded versus kind of starkly angled up. I've really been liking the way it's turning out. So I'm just kind of patting and then blending. Just right on the outer corner only. And then you just go back in and build up to the intensity you desire. And now with my finger I'm going into this one right here. It's kind of mid-tone mauve brown. Putting that right on the lid. We're doing an all matte look today. And now I'm using the dark, dark gray, almost black that's in the palette. And this Makeup by Ariel brush. And I'm lining my upper lash lines. I'm pressing this right at the base of my lashes. And then I'm adding just a touch on the very, very outer corner, like the very, very tail end of my lower lash line as well. And connecting it to the upper lash line. So the eyeshadow is done. This palette is perfect for just a soft, everyday look. Or to use as the base for other more dramatic looks. I am aware that a lot of people feel like the Master Mattes palette is just too warm toned. And if that's you, then this new version is for you. Okay, I'm going to curl my lashes, apply mascara, come back and do cheeks and lips. For blush, I have the LYS Higher Standard Blush in the shade Bubbly, which is described as a soft pink. How do I open this? Ooh, very pretty packaging. It's like an iridescent, Pink or, yeah, is that pink or lilac? Pink. Okay, my camera has been having issues the entire time I've been filming with the autofocus. Hopefully it's going to be okay. I've been putting off and putting off buying a new camera because they are so expensive, but I think I need to. Fingers crossed, this is all coming out okay. I have it on manual focus now versus autofocus. I'm a little nervous because I don't wanna to have to redo this video. This is supposed to be my first impressions, right? So how am I going to do this? I think, I'm going to take a brush and pick up some of the product. Ooh. Ooh, that looks very, very bold and bright, so I'm tapping some off on my hand before I go right into my cheeks. And that is still super pigmented, and it has a little bit of a glow to it. Look how pretty that is. I'm taking it off my hand now to add a little bit more. Wow. This is really, really beautiful. I love a good cream blush. And a little bit goes such a long way. I'm only taking from off my hand. Okay, I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now and check that this is all coming through okay on camera.
Okay, it seems as if things are coming out okay, even though things are not going well up on my viewfinder. I will be going to Best Buy after this and getting a new camera. But let's finish off this video before my camera decides to completely die on me. All right, for lips, I have one of the new Hourglass lip liners. I wasn't going to buy one of these because they are so expensive for a lip liner. But as usual, I caved. I just wanted to try it out, compare it to other lip liners I have. Hopefully I chose a good color. I did pick it out online. This is shade three, Tempt. And then for my lip product, ooh, at least it comes with a sharpener, that's nice. Um, I asked on my Instagram what new lip product people wanted me to test. And some people said the House Labs lip oil, but I have already tried that. And I do like it, in fact, I just ordered another shade. But the majority of people that messaged me said they wanted to see the new Huda Beauty Faux Filler Lip Plumping Gloss. So I picked that up in the shade Bombshell. I think it comes in five or six colors. And this was the one that appealed to me most. I don't look great in like milky baby pinks. And I also don't look that great in honey toned lip colors. So that's why I went with Bombshell because it's described as like a mid-toned rose pink. So let's do the liner first. It's very creamy. It reminds me a lot of the Pat McGrath lip liners. I do like the color a lot. It's a really nice neutral pink. And I'm filling in my lips just a little bit with the pencil. And now let's try the faux filler. Here's the packaging. I'm sure by now most of you have already seen it. I've heard about this big doe foot applicator and the shine. People are raving about the shine. Oh, that is shiny. I mean, a gloss should be shiny, right? But that's super high shine. But I do think I chose a very good combo, like the perfect combo. All right, I'm going to check once again if this last part came out okay. And then as usual, I'm going to get dressed, do my hair, come back and give you a quick recap of everything I tested. All right, this is the finished look. And now I'll briefly go over everything. Starting off with the blush stick. Um, don't do what I did and forget to twist it back down because you will end up with this. Again, my autofocus isn't working. So you might not have seen that, but let's just say I got blush all over the base of the cap and the main component. So yeah, definitely try to remember to twist it back down before you put the cap back on. Other than that, I love this blush. I do not need to wear a highlighter with this because this gives enough glow on its own. And as usual, I will have a caption on the bottom of the screen letting you know how the concealer and foundation and blush held up throughout the day. I will say as far as the lip color, while I do love the combo, even in the 15, 20 minutes it took for me to change and fix my hair, I felt like the color faded and I had to reapply a little bit. There's also no tingle with this or any kind of irritation or burning that you might find with something like a NYX Duck Plum or a Too Faced Lip Injection. This is called Faux Filler because it's supposed to give your lips the illusion of looking fuller. And in this case, the high shine is what does it. The Makeup by Mario Master Matte's Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. This is beautiful. I love it. Are there comparable dupes out there, like from ColourPop or Morphe? Probably. But I really do like the formula of Mario's eyeshadows, and I also really like the packaging. It's perfect for travel, it's a perfect size, it has a mirror, it has a great combination of shades, and you can achieve many beautiful looks with it. The NYX Buttermelt Bronzer gets two thumbs up. I did have to add a little bit of body makeup to my chest in order to make things look even, because while the foundation was the correct color, the bronzer made me a little bit too bronze. The lip pencil, especially this shade Tempt, is so good. Is it a must have? 
No, only if you don't already own something similar, then I would say, yeah, because like most Hourglass products, the quality is definitely there. Okay, what else did I try? The Cali Ray Brightener, so good, so, so good. It went on smoothly, blended like a dream. The consistency was perfect, and it really did neutralize the pinkish, bluish tinge that I have underneath my eyes. And the powder, which as I mentioned in the demo was not my first time trying it, but it is a new product, the Makeup Forever powder, did make my face look so, so flawless. I do still have some shine coming through, and that is with using the Yummy Skin Water Powder Serum. So as of right now, I can't say that I'm seeing a significant improvement in shine control with this combination of products. As I said towards the beginning of the video, the Luminous Silk is not known for being the best for oily skin. It does make you quite glowy. So I was just hoping that between the Danessa Myricks and the powder, it would keep me more shine free. And I feel a little bit less shiny than I normally would at this point, but let's just say it's not making quite the impact that I kind of hoped it would. Of course, I will try my best to update you on these products in a future video, but for now, that is it for March 2024's Testing Hot New Makeup. As usual, all of the products will be listed and linked down below in the description box, as well as through YouTube Shopping. You just have to click on the View Products button, and if the product is available through YouTube Shopping, I will have it tagged there as well. If you did enjoy this video, I always appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. I do upload new videos at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram and TikTok. My username is the same everywhere. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.